Hey there, this is your orchestration tutor Thomas Goss, with a few words about getting ready for Term 1 of the Massive Open Online Orchestration course. When I posted the information for my Term 1 MOOC, I didn't include any restrictions about eligibility. That's because the information in this course cuts across all levels of experience. Since registration began, I've had the entire range of experience represented in the forms I've received, from total beginners to working professionals. And that's how it should be. What you get out of this course is going to depend on what you bring to it, but it will hopefully work for everyone because it's about building your own artistic approach out of the realities of how string instruments work and how their players do their job. All the same, there are some skills that everyone should have or should polish up before jumping into the course. The first and most important is simply the ability to score your work. I know that sounds obvious, but bear with me. Even some pro and semi-pro composers out there may need to catch up a bit on their notation skills, or at least review that craft a bit. Working with DAWs for a long time can sometimes develop your instincts of how music works into a different mindset of composing. So I strongly recommend that composers revisit notation if they haven't touched it in a long while. Or do some catching up if those skills aren't quite where they need to be yet. I'll have a big suggestion about this at the end of the video, so stay tuned. Another skill is facility. That's simply the process of applying yourself to a creative problem and coming up with a solution, or many solutions. There are a lot of aspects to this. Experience, curiosity, inspiration, lack of anxiety, and musical literacy. When you face a challenge with psychology and technique, and a lot of hard work, then the result is a creative and well-crafted outcome. I've got a few suggestions here about developing greater facility. One is to simply compose first, and then edit later. Turn off the internal critic until your ideas have enough mass to be shaped. Another is to set yourself short little challenges, like how fast you can come up with an idea, or taking a chord progression from one piece and turning it into another piece. Once again, more on this later in this video. I could keep listing skills all day, and I think it might just intimidate some composers instead of inspiring them. So let's turn the question around. What is the course going to require you to do as a composer? Well, first of all, you're going to be scoring assignments for string instruments that will be due every two weeks. That's where facility and notation skills are needed. You're also going to be listening to a great deal of music and thinking critically about what you hear. And you'll have many score reading assignments in which you may be focusing on different specific aspects of the music rather than just letting the notes flow by under your eyes as you listen. Finally, the instruction is going to direct your attention to the way great music builds on the structure and natural technique of each instrument toward individuality, relationships, and form. You should be thinking about how that applies to your own studies as a performer, remembering what it feels like to control the music instead of just being a backseat driver. So I'm just telling everyone out there now, your level of experience doesn't matter that much, at least with regard to the MOOC. What you really want to do right now is to test drive your composing skills, organize your craft, and make sure you've allotted some time every week over the coming months. This isn't something you can just schedule into your calendar, like deciding to be a composer on such and such a date. Your musical engine needs to already be running when you start. If you want to kickstart that engine, and make sure you're running on all cylinders, then here's where the Term Zero course comes in. As I mentioned in my last video, I'm offering a catch-up course for my Patreon supporters to get them up to speed on a lot of the skills I just talked about. Practical ability with notation is a must, so I'll be assigning my 101 and 102 Mac Pro video courses for Sibelius users who need to get up to speed. This will tie into additional transcription assignments and video lessons about craft and scoring strings. I'll include some creativity drills in which you complete or fill in musical examples with your own ideas or compose along certain guidelines. Another very important factor is workflow, balancing your creativity, craft, and hands-on efforts to develop a more workable process for composition. I'll have a video about that, along with some suggestions about time management. But that's just output. Input is equally important at this stage. The Term Zero course assigns basic reading in harmony and counterpoint to make sure everyone is on the same page for the coming course. Sight singing skills a bit rusty? I've got some drills assigned from a very easy to get book, plus a few of my own. Once you go through even the rudiments of solfege, you'll get immediate results with the guided score reading that I'm also assigning in the Term Zero course. 
The Term Zero course will be open to all Patreon supporters, with some extra benefits to the Dotted Breb and Longa level supporters. Find out more about the course by clicking the link below. But look, whether you want to take that opportunity or not, please think about what I said earlier in the video and start getting into the right frame of mind and the right level of activity now. Do some score reading on your own, sketch some ideas, listen to string trios and quartets, and always think like a composer. I'll see you very soon with some more videos to get you ready for Term 1. Thank you.